Guys, I've got great news. I figured it out. I've cracked the Kojima code. I finally understand the multi-layer complex narrative of Death Stranding. It took me years of study and hundreds of playthroughs. I actually had to invent time travel so I could come back and make this video. I've got the explanation right here on this piece of toilet paper. Yeah, we write on toilet paper in the future instead of normal paper. It's a long story. Okay, I need you guys to stay with me. I promise this is confusing, but it'll all be worth it. Look, it's easy to sh on Death Stranding. Really easy. I could do it for 20 minutes and slap a bunch of ads on the video and call it a day. It's also easy to make excuses for some questionable game design because you respect Kojima too much. Death Stranding had more hype than Diablo Mobile. Wait, that's not right. More hype than Cyberpunk 20. Okay, that's definitely not true. You know what? It had more hype than most games out there. Kojima was ousted by Konami. It was a comeback story and Kojima the comeback kid. I get it. He made the Metal Gear series, which earned him mountains of respect in the industry. I haven't even played those games, but I can understand why people treat Kojima the way they do. Wait, what? This guy's never played a Metal Gear Solid game? Are you a f***ing loser, or do you just pretend to be one on the internet? Haha, <laughs> got him! I made a video last week about Death Stranding reviews, and let's just say some people didn't appreciate me making fun of Kojima's latest masterpiece. It's okay though, because I appreciated me making fun of Kojima's latest masterpiece. Now that the game is out, I have at least one minute of playtime, which makes me entitled to share my opinion. Before the game even starts, it asks for your birthday. I couldn't read the tiny text, so I took out my pre-order bonus magnifying glass and discovered this is complete bullshit and has nothing to do with the game. Apparently, if you set it to your birthday, you get a birthday cake. Hey, that's pretty neat. After watching Norman Reedus ride his future bike for 45 minutes, I got to finally play. The game told me that rain is bad because it makes you old, and old people are useless. So I hiked to this cave and grabbed my popcorn for the next hour-long cutscene. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed what I played. Something about helping Sam navigate terrain is weirdly satisfying, and we'll get to that later. This girl shows up and calls herself fragile. Her face is fine, but she has the body of an 80-year-old because, again, the rain is bad. Also, Sam totally ran her over with his bike, but they both seem to have forgotten about it by this point. We cried together, and then she munched on this tardigrade. She explained that she needed to teleport away to find more bugs, and at that point, I knew it was time to walk to the next cutscene. I got sidetracked because somebody dropped their smart drugs and bootleg pornography, and my crippling OCD prevented me from continuing without getting every last package in the first area. I did that, and honestly, I had a great time. The environment is beautiful, and it played out like a music video because there was a song blaring the entire time. After filling out some paperwork, my first illicit drug drop-off was a success. Then this guy shows up, in what can only be described as what happens when Exhibit gets too carried away in a Pimp My Ride episode. Our mission was to listen to him complain while we rode in the truck. Fucked us beyond all recognition. The whole time you're given the most uncomfortable camera position in the history of video games. I got claustrophobic and almost choked on my movie popcorn. The driver got tired of Igor's complaining and decided to crash the car to end everyone's misery. Sam and the gang got attacked by evil footprints and Igor shot himself because even he got tired of his own complaining. The token bad guy showed up and Sam adopted a tank baby. Turns out the adoption process is way more complicated in the future. Also, this black spaghetti monster appeared out of nowhere and swallowed Igor, causing a f***ing nuclear explosion. That part is not a joke. That's literally what happens. Sam wakes up naked in the afterlife and cradles his new child. Turns out he can die and come back to life because reasons. In the process, Sam has visions of the bad guy from Casino Royale. Then he throws up black goo and gets up like that was just something that happens to people. Everything about this sequence was bizarre, but I actually enjoyed it. I was okay with not knowing what was going on because the mystery of it all hooked me. It's the kind of weird that I can totally get behind. As you might suspect, this feeling doesn't last very long. You wake up chained to the bed in a room with award-winning film director Guillermo del Toro. No, this is not going where you think it's going. But he is wearing objectively too much rubber. He calls himself Dead Man and explains the entire plot from start to finish. He recruits you for a super important mission, deliver drugs to the president. Oh, I must have read the cover wrong. This isn't Death Stranding. This is actually Drug Delivery Simulator 2019. Wait, nobody's made that joke, right? I came up with that all by myself? Okay, good. Meet Die Hard Man. Die Hard Man. Like, Die Hard? No, no, no. Die Hardman. 
Die. This is what happens when you use a random name generator for your AAA video game. He explains that the president will die unless Sam shaves his god-awful beard. When he refuses, the president dies of sheer disappointment and leaves her entire drug cartel to him. The next mission, burn the president's body, because explosions. This is the first time you actually get to play Death Stranding. And by play Death Stranding, I mean walking. And by walking, I mean trying not to fall over with a goddamn corpse on your back. It's easier than it looks. And it's the funniest thing in this game. Oh damn, I'm sorry. Finally, the training wheels come off and things actually open up. Use a combination of ladders, ladders, and more ladders to get where you need to go. By the time I had burned the president's body and all of the evidence on how she was murdered, I felt like I got a hang of the game. But the name Death Stranding is very accurate because it will kill you with the sheer amount of tutorials that last far into the game. Of course, you can't just burn the president's body and expect no one to ask questions, so the spaghetti monsters made their return to get some answers. Surprising no one, Norman Reedus and the Tank Baby team up for this fall's hottest buddy cop drama. Those terrorists might have killed the president, but it's not over until these two say so. After a brief debrief, Sam is worn out from making that mission his absolute bitch and needs to wash off all the excess testosterone. But before he does, we have to stop here. We have to stop because this is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen in a video game. Every time Sam goes to his private room after any mission, whenever he wants, you can do this. I don't think I can make up a more egregious example of product placement. The entire can is rendered so perfectly. It's got even the nutritional information and the entire description of Monster on the can. This was someone's job. Someone got paid to create this so that Kojima Productions could get paid to put it in the game. Everyone's been wondering, what is genius? What is the pinnacle of this industry? And I think we just found it. After crushing that monster like an absolute madman, I took Sam over to the mirror for some pre-shower warm-ups. Once he was officially psyched out of his mind, we hopped in the shower. And let me tell you, this is the first problem I had with this game. Look at the shower switches. Look at the temperatures. Is, is this what we can expect in the future? Switches, one for hot and one for cold? From what I've gathered in my countless hours of research, this is what caused the Death Stranding. I hope Kojima's not trying to predict the future because that is not a world I want to live in. Sam heads to the president's office to find out he was bamboozled. Turns out the president didn't die. She traveled back in time to when she was younger to resume her control over the drug cartel. By all accounts, this was a totally douchey move. Sam storms out of her office like any self-respecting protagonist would after getting burned like that. Dead Man and Die Hard Man talk Sam off the edge and tell him there's no way he can quit the force. Tank Baby would be furious if he lost his partner after everything they've been through, and you do not want to get on that guy's bad side. Sam reluctantly took his badge and gun back and hit the showers to cool off. After taking an extremely satisfying shit, Sam suits up for the next mission. According to my toilet paper records, that's the end of Death Stranding. There's no more, that, that's the game. <laughs>